Hello everyone, Maverick Mike, Ikoma Mike, come on in. I got a new Christmas present, a Ryobi 9 inch bandsaw. So let's go ahead, put it together. Let's do all of the adjustments and put it through its paces. Let's see how it does. So here are the loose items that came with this. It's a tabletop, kind of a nice aluminum tabletop, better than I expected. A miter gauge, a handle for the tabletop to lock it down, and a couple of set screw wrenches. I believe that was a 4 and a 2 millimeter set screw wrench. All right, looking at the back side of this unit, on the top side, we have the blade tension knob up here. We have the rapid set blade tension lever right here. We have the blade tracking knob right here. We have the blade guide adjusting knob here. We have the blade guide lock knob here. And we have the blade guard. On the bottom side here, we have the table angle adjusting knob. We have the pointer. We have the motor, and I kind of like the way the motor is set up on an eccentric so you can adjust the belt. And the dust port, which is a two and a half inch dust port. All right, let's open up the front covers and take a look on the inside. We've got these nice quick release latches over here, which I kind of like. I think they're pretty cool. And when you first open it, you see that the blade is just hanging loose and it's shipped that way. So we have the upper wheel over here. We have the upper blade guide assembly. We have the lower blade guide assembly, the lower wheel. We have the drive belt from the motor. And it all looks very straightforward and very simple. And um, these are metal, which I appreciate. In fact, looking at the overall build quality, my initial assessment is that for a sub $200 bandsaw, 9 inch bandsaw, it's quite well made. So I'm pretty happy with the quality that I see in it so far. But the proof will be in the pudding, so we're going to go ahead and put the blade on and in detail make all of the adjustments to the blade. All right, here's a close up view of the upper blade guide assembly with the thrust bearing right here and the blade guides. There's one on the right and one on the other side, which is the left one. I'll give you a view of that from the front. All right, we have not put the blade in place, but you can see the blade guides on either side of the blade there, and they're adjustable uh, in and out. You just use your supplied set screw, loosen this, and you can move the blade guides in and out. And here's a close-up view of the bottom blade guide assembly along with its thrust bearing right there and the blade guides sitting above that. All right, so let's install this belt. The first thing to do is make sure that this lever is in the counterclockwise position. That's the rapid set blade tension lever. All right, let's put this blade on. All I'm going to do is try to center it on the wheel as best I can. Actuate the adjustment rod. So let's go ahead and spin this. I can see it's a little off, not too bad. Let's adjust the tracking knob. Looks like I have to come right, so I need to tighten this up a bit. There we go, it's moving to the right. And that's looking pretty fair as I rotate the wheels. Looks like it's centered pretty good. I might have moved it a little too much. Let's back it off a little bit. Move it back to the left. Okay. Set a little more tension on this. Go ahead and lock the uh, blade guard down. So let's go ahead and adjust the upper thrust bearing. The first thing I'm going to do is loosen it up a little bit, loosen up the adjustment, which is this one right here. Let's just loosen that up. Open up this door, little plastic door that just kind of slides open here. Come on. There we go. Okay, let's take a piece of paper between here and the bearing. Let's make this thinner, and let's move this bearing forward until the paper just drags a little bit. 
Okay, that paper is just dragging there at that point. So I am going to go ahead and tighten this down. And double check. I can feel just a slight drag on the paper and goes in. And I can see that there actually is a little bit of a gap. Okay, that's pretty good right there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the blade guides. All right, let's go ahead and adjust the blade guides now. You wanna make sure that the blade guide and the we want to make sure the blade guide is hitting behind the gullet. In other words, it's not catching on the teeth at all. Okay, I see a, just a little bit of light between the guide and the blade. That's good. I'm going to call that one good on the left. I'm going to do the same thing on the right after I tighten this up. Looks pretty good. This bottom hole right here is where you engage the screw for the thrust bearing in and out adjustment. So we're going to go ahead and do the thrust bearing first. All right, I'm finally happy with that. Per the instructions, you stick a piece of paper in there so that there's just a little bit of drag between the blade and the wheel. You tighten it down and then that should be good. However, this is really fussy because the bearing support cantilevers as you're tightening it down so it comes out this way. So I've had to fuss around with it uh, to get it where I want it. It's finally about to the right distance between the blade and the bearing. Set the gullet first, uh, the gullet adjustment, before I set the tightness. So we want to make sure that these guides do not catch on the teeth of the blade. So we want to set it far back, far enough back. That the blade guides won't touch it. And I think that's about good, right there. I'm going to tighten this down, double check. Okay, that looks good. Alright, let's go ahead and do the lower blade guide to blade adjustment. All right, that one looks good right there. And that feels pretty good, let's see. I know it's hard for you guys to see in there, but there's just a little tiny gap between the blade and the blade guide so i'm going to call that good all right so now i'm going to give the wheels a spin and uh take a look at the tracking on the blade see how that's doing looks pretty good i may be able to bring it in just a little bit so turn the tracking knob clockwise just a tad Okay. That is looking pretty good.
Okay, just a little bit of drag on the paper and the bearing is not spinning as I'm turning the wheels, so that's good. Once again, this bearing is cantilevering as I'm tightening down the adjustment screw. So I also wanted to point this out. This is a nice little feature. It is a uh, dust brush that is supposed to rest on the top of the bottom wheel here and uh, brush the sawdust off as it passes. However, I don't think the brush engages the wheel fully. I think it just get, engages part of it, maybe the outer edge. And I don't know if there is an adjustment for this. However, I may try to loosen the screw and tilt this thing out or bring it out just so that it catches more of the wheel. All right, let's loosen up the screw and try to move this thing kind of out that way a bit. I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. But I'm trying to position more towards the uh, wheel. Okay, it's I got it sticking out more this way now. And now it appears to be hitting all the wheel. Okay, now that we have this little dust brush adjusted so it's going to hit all the wheel back here, let's go ahead and close this up. Put the latches in place. And move on to the tabletop. Okay, to put the tabletop on, we take off this wing bolt here. Move the washers and the dewasher that goes on the top here. And then we're going to set this over the blade and in place. Okay, let's install this tabletop. I've got my blade guard moved all the way up. Just going to place this over the blade. Then line this up. You have to pull these, this lever back in order to get this on. And go ahead and oh, where do you go? And go ahead and put the uh, lock handle in place. Now this lock handle is nice. There's a little push button over here so that you can uh, clock where you want the handle to be. All right. Let's put our little dewasher back on on the front and the wing nut. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, set the table so that it's 90 degrees to the blade. Alright, we've got it plugged in for the first time. One more manual turn. Nothing seems to be binding. Let's go ahead and power this thing up. Sounds good. Stick this miter gauge on here and just a piece of scrap wood. And let's give it a cut.
So I'm pretty happy with this Ryobi. The build quality is better than I expected, especially for the price. And uh, it's not that powerful of a machine, but for a hobbyist like me, nothing wrong with this. This is a keeper. This is Maverick Mike. Mahalo for watching. Ahoy ho.